Oh, it's been a million years since I've made a video, so let's do this, guys. All right, how are you guys doing today? I just want to do a fun video for you guys. I haven't made a video in, like, a month, so I'm just going to do a fun video for you guys today. I'm going to be reacting to some really stupid news stories that have to do with either video games, movies, etc. I don't know. Um, the, some of these will be from the 80s, 90s, or whatever, and let's just go with it. The first video we have titled for today is 1980 TV News Report Explains Video Games and already it's 1980. Video games have barely even existed yet. Um, I want to see how these people explain these video games, so let's get started. The government is having trouble with its budget, but you might end up having a little trouble with yours. When you see the price tags on this year's hottest Christmas toys, Maxine Block says the people who make electronic games smile when they look at their bank books. How is government paying similar to a parent paying for a video game. That's like two completely different ballparks of money right there. Now off to a good start. These games may very well be at the top of many Christmas lists. Wait one second. <laughs> Is that a speaking spell? That's not even a video or whatever. There are so many of these games available that it's difficult to know which ones to buy. And that's why toy manufacturers are spending millions of dollars in advertising. In this battery-operated game, the player uses electronic sounds as clues to get through the maze and steal the treasure. It's being called this year's hot item. Wait, these aren't video games. That's, that's a board game. That is clearly a board game. You have a board right there. I mean, there's some electronic parts to it, but that's a board game! I think the uh, hottest item uh, makers are the TV commercials. There's no question about it. The children watch them, and uh, the avid, and the people know it. The manufacturers know it, and they know what times to put the TV commercials on. And uh, they they just uh, the kids know. That's the weirdest statement I've ever heard. That's like, of course they're showing advertisements. They make advertise whatever. That's that's business. All right, whatever. Electronic handheld games like this one are also very hot items this time of year. What makes them so popular? Wait a second, go back to that. Elect Is that one of those old, like, um, baseball, football handhelds? Do you know what I'm talking about? Those, like, ones that, like, have the dot moving across the screen? That's not really, well, I guess this is the 80s and they really didn't have high-tech games then, but you still had an Atari and stuff, like, why is that the game you decide to highlight? Then there are the electronic video games. You hook them up to your TV set. They're expensive. Top price, nearly $300. $300? You could buy a PS4 today for $300. Imagine in 1980 buying an Atari or an NES for $300. I mean, don't get me wrong. The NES has some great games. But, like, you're paying $300 for two blobs to move... Especially for Atari. Atari, old Atari games... Two blobs moving across the screen, like an uh, adventure or something like that. I mean, of course, the NES had much better games, and that's when they started to get a lot better. But, like, Atari pay $300 for two pong, pong balls to hit across the screen. Times have really changed. I remember when I was a kid, my father would buy a game for the family, and we'd play it. And back then, it was a, it was usually the most expensive game that was that was purchased for us. Now, of course, uh, times being at the and the things being that they are, uh, the family game is now turned into and around the TV set. It seems, and this is an ideal gift. Everyone can play it. Everyone can get involved. This guy thinks is comparing video games to board games now sure you're like okay but in, when he was born or whatever in the 50s board games are what they had but you're comparing a video game to a board game that's not even like in the same level the problem may be too involved some argue that players get so hypnotized by these games that they have little time for anything else it's called parenting your children we still have that problem today nobody knows the simple concept of just parenting your children you watch what they do, and you say, turn off the TV when it's done. Like, it's not that hard of a concept to grasp. Why are parents against them? They say that, I, I think a lot of the parents say that they're, uh, especially in the arcade parlors, that they're uh, occupying too much of the kids' time, taking their lunch money, things like that. Did he just say parlors are taking people's lunch money because of video games? They say that, I, I think a lot of the parents say that they're, uh, especially in the arcade parlors, that they're uh, 
occupying too much of the kids' time, taking their lunch money, things like that. I <laughs> this guy seriously thinks that by a kid going to an arcade, that the arcade parlors are taking their lunch money. That's the kid's fault. The kid is the one deciding to give the parlor their lunch money. Don't blame the parlor for this. The arcade <laughs> They're kind of expensive. Do you have one? Yeah. Who bought it for you? My mother. Did she say it was a big sacrifice? Yeah. How many hours do you play it? I don't know, six or seven. A day? Yeah. Well, you this, this kid's like, shut up, lady. Get out of my face. I'm just trying to play asteroids. <laughs> Look at this kid. He didn't even care. Like when he asks you this last question. How many hours do you play it? I don't know, six or seven. A day? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even answer. He's like, yeah, get out of my face. <laughs> he didn't tell you that he was playing for that long. He just decided not to answer your question. It might be wise to limit playing time. Well, we visited several stores, and they say they're fully stocked for Christmas. They may even have a few left over if you want to buy them after Christmas. The second after they said that, a parent went to a store and they all went there, and they sold out within five minutes. Guarantee you. Okay, so I can't really go too harsh on that one, because, I mean, this is from the 80s, and, like, video games are still a very new thing. However, I'm gonna go to a news report from today for our next one. Okay, so our next one is called Tests Could Show the Effects of Gaming on Your Kid's Brain, and I already see some, some photos of people scanning kids' brains. This should be interesting. Parenting alert about your child's brain on Fortnite. So we're taking a closer look at what it could, how it could affect a kid's mind. Man, good morning, America's desperate. <laughs> of course their brain's gonna function differently if they're playing a game, they're more focused. Like, that's like, come on. Like, that's like, they're just being desperate now for clicks and views. Like, we gotta get those clicks, we gotta get those clicks. Come on, view us. Ten-year-old Cash loves Fortnite. Who names their child Cash? Sorry if anybody out there is watching this video is named Cash, but like, actually, you know what? I might actually like the name Cash because you're associated with money, which is exactly what Good Morning America is trying to do right now. I see their scheme. He plays every day. His mom says sometimes as much as five hours on weekend days that he doesn't want to go on play dates because he'd rather play Fortnite with friends online and that the game is the first thing he thinks about in the morning. He would definitely choose to do Fortnite over most things. Because he wants to get that victory royale. I mean, come on, like, if this kid gets the victory royale and keeps on getting them, he could be an ultimate gamer. He can get made more money than the people making this making this news report probably even have. Come on. <laughs> Fortnite has 250 million players, and while the company doesn't report hours played daily, parents are at wit's end. How much money do you think Cash has spent in-game? Thousands? Thousands. There's no way. I mean, I know people probably spent thousands of videos. Okay, number one. How did that kid get that money? Probably from his parents, so th it's the parents' fault. Like, come on. You're the one giving him the money. You should be the one that's I no longer pay him allowance in dollars. I pay him allowance in V-Bucks. Then stop paying him his allowance. Ground him. Experts say games like Fortnite have a recipe to make you want to keep playing. Oh, I just killed a soccer skin. <laughs> this kid should try once well, probably trying to be a personal gamer and he says, Oh, I just killed that soccer skin. <laughs> I don't play Fortnite anymore, I'm sorry. To see what actually happens in Cash's brain when he's playing Fortnite, we head to the Marcus Institute of Integrative Medicine at Jefferson Health. Neuroscientist Andrew Newberg uh, so we're gonna put like a little helmet kind of on you. uses an fMRI machine to set up a comparison. They're forcing this kid to do this. This kid's probably scared for his life right now to go inside this thing because he thinks his parents are gonna take away Fortnite after. How does Cash's brain respond to three things? Random visuals with color and motion, a similarly violent video game from a few years back, and then to Fortnite. You're gonna compare birds flying in the air, very simple image, to Fortnite. Like, at least get like something exciting happening in real life. Even a, something that happens at a carnival. Like, that would even be better than this. 
Cash will do this exercise, but as a comparison, his schoolmate, 12 year old Amato, will go through the same process. One big difference Amato doesn't play Fortnite. It's one of those games where you kill each other. <laughs> the kid that reads the book. That's not even a fair comparison. <laughs> you can see Cash's brain on the left, Amato's, the non Fortnite player, on the right. Watching Fortnite, Dr. Newberg says Cash's brain had much greater activation than Amato's in an area called the anterior cingulate, a structure that in part is involved in dopamine release and for some people can be associated with addiction. Okay, so I can't really complain against a doctor. Doctor probably knows a lot more than I do. But like gaming disorder, I mean, to be fair, there are probably some people that are really addicted to it, but like there's ways to get out of it. <laughs> I mean, I can't really complain against a doctor, though, because the doctor is probably much more qualified and smarter than I am, so I can't judge. Dr. Newberg says gaming addiction is a real disorder. Cash, by all accounts, is doing well in school and in other areas of his life. He literally just said he's doing well in school and the other parts of his life. If he's still doing well there, you can at least have some time to play some video games if you're really working really hard. But we'll see what the mother says. But for his mom, even this rough association is scary. How does that make you want to alter or adjust Cash's playing? Because what I witnessed is... No. Oh, this... Oh. It's a big deal. I think everything in moderation, and I don't know what moderation is with Fortnite. And Cash's mom, Rusty, has put time limits on his gaming. 30 minutes on school days, no more than three hours each weekend day, Robin. So what is it about this game? What is it about Fortnite? I just love how these news reporters don't even care about, like, trying to at least think about the actual game and stuff like that. They just want to get to, like, what's the effect on kids? We want to know this, and they, and they probably want the answer to be bad because, you know, publicity. It's not really about self-regulation at a certain point. Asking your kids to know when to stop playing is probably unrealistic. Uh, you, the parent, need to tell them when it's time to take a break. Thank you. So this news report was a lot better. I actually kind of thought it was gonna be like, the video game companies need to take charge because a lot of news reports do that, but still, it's called parenting. All right, guys, so that was just a quick video I wanna do for you guys today. It wasn't as exciting or talkative that I thought I was going to be like trying to make fun of some of these things. But you know what? At least I still tried. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.